in the school sense is called the school resource officer or SRO. Uh, at this point now, since last spring, uh, he was able to work it out and, and we already had a, a, a contract with them to where we were able to shift some hours and really get an officer there throughout the day when we needed them the most. And uh, we're very thankful for, for that, that transition period. But at this point, what, uh, we're at a point here in October where uh, we're looking at renewing an interlocal agreement customized to the needs of our camp, our district right now. Uh, this is a three-year commitment that we look at. And what would happen from this is that the police uh, department would hire an additional officer. Uh, that way we continue to have the officer that we have. Uh, what we put in the interlocal agreement as well is that it would be from 715 to 415. Uh, having the officer on campus at the high school. Now, again, the focus would be at the high school, but that doesn't mean that if we need a, uh, the officer somewhere else or another school, uh, he would be available to us at that point. Are there any questions on the interlocal agreement? Or Chief, do you have any comments that you'd like to make? In the past, we had a Someday, where there's no school holidays in summer, we're going to get we'll pick up, you know, some of that use of the officer. We'll still be assigned to the campus, same hours, but during the summer, if need be, he will be used elsewhere. But he'll still his main job, even when school is not session, to go to campus. And Chief was able to work with us because by starting the officer uh, this year, the officer I think has been uh, with us at eight o'clock, I believe. 8.30. Well, what we're doing is to ensure that we have an officer at all times at the primary in the morning to help us out with the traffic flow. That's why we're starting at 7.15 and all the way to 4.15 with an hour lunch. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to move on to the give you, uh, we're able to actually acquire three different companies just so we can really start to look to see what are some options for us uh, in the long term. Uh, you know, part of what we did is this summer we presented a, a plan to our, our trustees. Uh, the Really the trend has been that we hire, we buy, purchase one bus per year. Um, at, at this point also uh, the trustees, you were very uh, gracious in, in really helping us with our white fleet as well. Uh, we just, uh, I sent you all a picture on our on my weekly uh, news bulletin to you of uh, the two vans that were just purchased uh, with your approval. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we also are in the process of uh, purchasing a, the Suburban that was also approved. But with, with that said, we about two, three weeks ago, we had a, a situation with our buses where, again, it's, it's just one of the things that happened. We, in the afternoon, picking up our kids in between the primary and the intermediate, we had one bus that, that basically went down and then all of a sudden another bus within a few minutes and then a third bus within a few minutes. So it's just, it's something that's normally not gonna happen, but, but it did. And previous to that, we had two other buses the previous week that also had some mechanical problems. So with that said, what it did is just continues. I mean, we know that, that we have an older fleet and we're doing what we can as far as budgeting the funds and, and what you allow us to, to look at right now. So what we wanna do is look at other options since we haven't uh, purchased a bus this year. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we'll talk about a, what's called a lease uh, purchase uh, agreement. There's also a different one that uh, Mr. Vidalis and Mr. Shield will present to us as well. But we're right now we're at the, the information gathering stage to be able to look at some strategic uh, changes. Good evening. Uh, just to kind of catch you up to speed, a little glimpse of what transportation looks like. Um, right now, we currently have 41 buses, uh, 35 regular ed, six special ed, 
Our white team consists of three SUVs, adding the fourth one here soon, and one shock use excursion. Um, our operation fleet consists of 13 vehicles, and on a daily basis, we're running about 97 routes, uh, 1,500 stops a day. So and we're stopping every time, every day, 1,500 times to get our students back and forth to school, uh, which would roughly equal out to about 37, or excuse me, 375,000 miles a year. Uh, currently, our, our fleet averages on probably around 13, 14 years old. Uh, as you see, this is split between general ed on the far left column and spec ed on the far, far right. The oldest or our biggest opportunity is going to be our special ed just because the numbers are so small. And, and we have one, as you see, one new bus that's out of it, and that's in 2014. The other ones are 2006 and under. With our general ed, we run about a 50-50 or a one-to-one -one ratio. We have one route bus versus one reserve bus, if you will, or sub bus. Uh, when buses go out for field trips, breakdowns, mechanical failures, we have one-to-one -one to fill in that gap. Um, this is where we're finding our struggle because those buses that are, are coming to reserve are 14, 15, almost 25 years old. They run a wide variety. And as Dr. Bruno was saying, last week, week before last, has been uh, a challenge to us, to say the least. When we lose three buses, one bus in a line, it's trouble. When we lose three buses in a line, it's like the, the cats are loose and are running amongst the children, uh, literally. Uh, so given our opportunities, trying to find ways that we can increase our age of our fleet and maintain the safety of our students and efficiency of transportation. Um, back during the budget times, we had looked at many options. One of those being financing, one being continuing our purchase outright, and then the other option which we decided to go with was the lease return. We're finding the lease buses that other districts had went out and leased and had returned for various reasons. Uh, we found that there was a possible savings of anywhere from twenty to thirty-five thousand dollars with that particular bus. And trustees, assuming that, then I just want to make sure we're clear, just because we're using the word lease uh, in, within the same sentence. So lease return purchase, basically that, again, like Jason said, school districts had used them for a short amount of time, and they returned that, that lease at that point, that rental that they had. And then that company ends up selling them outright. And that's what we were looking at, is doing that purchase. I just want to make sure I clarify that, because when you see lease purchase, it could be confusing at the same time. Yeah, correct. And it's basically the same methodology as, as we see every year after the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo ends. All the vehicles they have used either through various functions, you see those arrive at the dealerships, you'll get substantial savings. Basically, we're going to the same theory. But we were what we ran into group, and what I didn't think was going to be that much of a challenge is trying to find a bus that not only fits our needs, but also meets the stringent state uh, of Texas specifications for our school bus. Uh, and through months and, or weeks and weeks and weeks of hard searching, I found none. Uh, we can go out and find one bus, but we'd have to dump another ten, fifteen thousand dollars to place all the windows in. Well, when you're going to go out and save twenty thousand, this is really mindful to spend twenty thousand rather than just buy, go out and buy two bus. Uh, so, for the next step, is how can we get out of this rut that we're in? Uh, and we had to lose into various functions as far as financing or leasing. The terminology just gets kind of weird. And I sat with a meeting this morning. We still learn as of today on just various structures we've found. So uh, we've talked to a couple different vendors, uh, two here locally. One is on a nationwide aspect. Uh, the one on a nationwide aspect was more of just running a, a number as a, as a unit, that more of individual specs of, of what we need. Uh, and you can see on 10 buses that we're running across uh, on an annual payment of anywhere from 111000 to 114000 depending on if we paid ahead of time versus if we paid after the fact. Or then Longhorn, this is Longhorn and the rush bus sales is when we get into the more specific bus for our particular needs, which meets our current specs as we've been buying for the last 15 years. Uh, so to break that down, um, only from either a five-year term, a seven-year term, or a 10-year term, just to kind of give us, all right, we've currently allotted 100,000, 125,000 a year. That's what we said we're gonna spend on one particular bus. 
how can we maximize that number and be able to get the buses that we need up front and still keep with our current allocation. Um, and kind of this is what it, it turns out, this is true some hard numbers, but not really specific quite yet. Uh, the Longhorn bus came back with 877 passenger buses, 253 passenger sped buses with wheelchair lifts, and then one activity bus is something that we haven't really talked about a lot, but something within the transportation, transportation toolbox uh, is a perfect need in a lot of our years with uh, field trips going to various functions. It's a size bus that doesn't require a CDL, so it kind of jumps that challenge a little bit, if you will. Uh, Longhorn <coughs> came back with those 11 units. We're looking on 122,000. Uh, that's a solid uh, 3.28 uh, effective interest rate, and, and that's going to be on an annual payment. Even with that one, along with the rush bus sales, it's, it's very simple financing, no, pay, no penalties as far as mileage, uh, as far as, as early payoff, just all kind of various functions at Lira. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, then the rush bus sales, basically the same concept, uh, same type of buses, uh, back track just slightly when we were talking about buses as far as maintaining a very consistent bus as far as being able to maintain parts and, and maintenance and, and trying to expedite that process, trying to keep things the same as much as we can. Uh, venturing from a Longhorn bus, which is an IC bus, to a Rush bus, which is a Bluebird, we go through and we can keep the same engine and transmission so that the drivetrain will be the same. So the major systems of the bus would be the same. The only varying functions would be locating the switches and more of just operations outside the bus. So if we can do that, I can probably still be happy just trying to make sure if we do this, it's going to be for one in our best interest, but two is not going to cause any indirect uh, consequences down the line. So Jason uh, mentioned, uh, go back. Okay, so TSC and long term bus sales, those are both uh, lease purchase, meaning that from the onset we're going to get the buses, but we're going to pay basically that annual payment, and at the very end, that we can properly build the IC. Whereas the rush bus sales, that was a little different. Uh, basically, what, it, what that is is that they will uh, wire the money to us at the very at the beginning. Once it's all been word approved, there's a resolution passed. Example: If it was uh, let's say one million dollars, they would wire that one million dollars to LVIC. We would in turn we would get the buses, and then we would in turn uh, pay rush bus sales that million dollars. And then after that, we we would pay back uh, it's a governmental capital corporation. And the, the cool thing about that is that basically we get the title up front. There's no lien holder on there. And so just because, again, we're going to pay for basically outright cash. And at the very <coughs> after that, we we'll certainly start paying off uh, that lease and the lease government rush calls. With, with that one in particular, with that last one, uh, basically there's no penalty if we pay early. However, uh, if, it, if, we go, if we decide to go up the tenure note, after year five, we can actually start paying um, them off even earlier. But once in the five years, we have to make that uh, annual required payment uh, for the first five years. TSC, uh, the only difference there is that it doesn't include a 14 passenger bus, whereas long form bus sales and rush bus sales actually, it, it's the same. Uh, we got information at the very end of the day with long form bus sales, so we didn't get a chance to actually call me uh, and have that conference call as we did this morning with TSC and uh, rush bus sales this morning. Uh, is there any questions as far as the different type of financing or? The interest rate. TSC is basically an estimation. Um, Longhorn and Rush are pretty much hard numbers. Of course, this is all subject to credit approval, just like any other purchase. You would go out and purchase your own vehicle or, or whatnot. And so, uh, any questions? What's your recommendation? What's your recommendation? Well, as far as Jake, I mean, Jason, Jason, how many? The 10 buses, is that what you're requesting? As far as the financing, uh, I believe um, capital government has, has actually worked with, with Walsh Bag. So there we have actually a, a contract template set up that our attorneys would have to draw up to there we have that. I would, I would like to go with the rush bus sales with government capital only because they do work with a lot of municipalities, uh, counties, and, and school districts as well across Texas. And just the fact that, again, we get that, they're going to wire the money to us, which I thought that was different because I, I didn't know about that. And then we would get the title with no lien holder, and then we would just turn around and pay uh, rush bus sales. So um, that 
that's a hard number. With that 2.918, that's based on the market rate, so they're not gonna go back and say, hey, we pulled your, your credit report, you know, now it's a 2%. That's an actual hard number there, so. Can you remind the board what we approved in June? Yeah, in June, it was $150,000. It was for one spe uh, special ed bus and one uh, general ed bus, and of course, that was for the, with that lease return that Jason was talking about um, earlier today. Out of fund balance, correct? Yes. We haven't, we haven't touched that, that's still there. How did you arrive at the 11 buses? Again? How did you, why, how did you arrive at meeting 11 buses? Basically, is, the biggest thing is using our current allocation of what we normally spend of $100,000 a year. Uh, but the biggest thing is, when you look at our fleet, the vast, can you back two slides? The mass of our older buses are within that, that 12 to 13 range. And the good thing we can do about this is jumping ahead of this fast will allow us to start getting in the rotation. Our, at 10 years, we can start returning the bus or selling the bus off and then restarting the phase over again because it's proven after 12, 10 to 12 years, the price of ownership of that particular unit becomes a whole lot higher and a whole lot higher. But because we're more after repairs, we, we kind of test your memory back in May and June when I gave my presentation, we dumped $25,000 in a bus that was maybe worth four. Uh, so financially and physically responsibly, it doesn't make sense to keep going down this road. This way we can get out of the mentality of being more of responsive as far as trying to just keep up and we can get ahead of actually uh, maintaining and really focus our operations on the maintenance side of the fleet rather than repair. That way, at the end of the, of the bus year term, we can turn around and sell it and get 10 grand versus 500 to 1,000. Did that answer? I understand that, but I'm still looking to replace 25% of your fleet. And now we've got a million dollar loan and we're paying 3% off. I'm trying to justify that. I mean, it'd be great to get question for the board for me is you want to have a million dollar loan that we didn't budget for this year and we have to budget that amount and you're every paying, year you're paying essentially four million dollars in interest so is, is that is that what is that something you want to do what what goes away in our budget if we're, if we're doing our budget based on zero at the end of the year so we're going to have a hundred twenty five thousand dollar net payment what do we what do we get a, get rid of or not I understand there's, there's a maintenance cost and we probably have to call it quantify whatever buses that we're replacing to sit there and go okay well if we're spending ten thousand dollars a bus a year in repairs then that that gets us there a little <coughs> bit but I want to know how are we going to make that payment without pretty, sacrificing pretty much in the past three four years the board's been approving a one bus purchase uh, the past four or five years at $100,000. So we got the $100,000 for that one bus. We can certainly go back and look at all the um, repairs that we've done in the past and to see, are we dumping in $10,000, $15,000 a year just in repairs alone? So now we're close to $115,000 for the year. And so, I, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, and I know Jason, obviously his need is on many buses now. And we can certainly, I mean, it doesn't have to be 10, we can certainly work, you know, reduce that number as well. But since we're already budgeting that amount of money every budget year, we thought maybe able to utilize that funding and we could help pay for the, the, the payment that's due. So this was the first year that we had to pull out a fund balance and didn't budget for it during the year? Or we've been pulling out a fund balance? Well, because I believe it was 250000 that uh, we had purchased 100000 or we had budgeted $100,000 and that seventy five and seventy five was one one fifty. Right. And so right now we still have that. We haven't touched that. And so uh, the good thing with example, with governmental capital, our first payment really wouldn't be until September 2018. So the money that we that you'll, that you'll all through our fund balance, that would be sitting there, we wouldn't touch that. But then, but then I'm looking at it, we buy 10 buses right now, in 10 years, we're back at the same spot. So we're not, we're not really right. gaining. See, see a, 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 the underlying, your, your logic is you're gonna use what you normally pay to buy one bus, but now you're gonna get 10 buses. Sure. Yeah, so you're going to use the same amount of money, 10 buses, so, but you're going to tell me we're not going to buy any more buses the next 10 years. I mean, I, that, that, we don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, so I mean, yeah, I mean, the, 
I'm all for getting but Sure. I'd like to replace them all. Sure. A brand new but I'm just trying to convince myself that that's it's the best way. Well, and again, we don't have to do the, I mean, the 10, that was just an example. So we go down to eight, down to five. I mean, that would still help transportation out. Uh, but we don't know. Then if we do decide to go for 10 years, we don't know if we need additional. That, that was my question. What is the sweet spot? What's five, eight, yeah. six? Uh, that's why I was asking how you come up with that number. So the, the, the 10 is just the ideal based on the, the front line as far as the buses. I mean, that's going to go back to that particular chart right there. Again, it's one of the things, trust people, we're going to look at what we feel that would make the biggest impact in the long run. Again, if we needed to look at, even if it was five, even if it was three, whatever it may be, the thing is, it's just one of those things where year after year we're going to continue uh, setting aside a little over $100,000 to purchase a bus, and our fleet is continuing to age. So it's one of those things where we're going to come up to a point to where uh, we have to do something. Now, a lot of times what school districts do is during uh, any type of, of bond, uh, that will be part of the bond package, and that's how school districts as well, they acquire uh, a, a bigger amount of, of buses, but we're not at that stage yet, at, at this point in the school district. So right now, it's one of those things where we continue moving forward as we have, uh, and, and again, it's just taking a baby step each time, or do we take a leap and then try to, try to really manage, because I mean, as you can see, we have some pretty old buses uh, at this point. So. Uh, the money is year to year has been set aside over a hundred thousand a little, little bit over a hundred thousand um, dollars you know you were this year gracious enough to help us out also with a white fleet which has helped out tremendously and will we continue to so that's part of the catching up that we're doing as well um, so it's just really putting out some different ideas some different options uh, one thing that i do want to clarify as far as lease purchase it's not like what you traditionally think when you lease a car it doesn't have if you decide to keep it doesn't have a balloon at the end um, there's not, you know, a certain about minus limitations. Um, but when we started really listening to it, I think rush bus sales sounds like, I mean, that's, there's a bigger market, it seems like, within school districts. It's uh, pretty common and uh, it, it was a different approach than the rest. You said rush bus sales were a little more. Is, is that what you, what, what do we have now? But they have. How big a difference? I mean, you had that fleet. You're used to working on this back now. And that's what I was discussing. Keeping the, the, the drive line, the engines, the transmission, all of that the same. That was the same functions there. Uh, there's no difference when we have to replace the turbo, which we're, we're spending most of our time eating. Uh, as far as the stop signs coming out, various light functions, <coughs> uh, circuitry within the wiring, uh, that's, of course, going to be different. But uh, it should be anything that we would be an issue with our mechanics. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for it. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm I think it's, it's, it's trying to get our kids a safe bus to ride, and there's a lot of buses on that bottom side, I wouldn't put my kids on. Uh, and I would expect anybody else to put their kids on. Uh, that's why we just completely pull them out of service. Uh, and from a day-to-day -day function, when we get down, when football's running, and cheers running, bands running, then we get the basketball, when we're down to the end of our, <coughs> our bump, and I have to put our kids, I mean, that situation is, put ourselves, in my opinion, uh, opening our wrists a little bit. So did we not know about this when we went through all the budgeting for fleet? Financing was an option that we discussed. It just wasn't a large topic discussion. We were still trying to maintain with our one bus a year. I, I guess the, the biggest thing is more of a surprise that we were good with one special ed bus and one regular bus. But the truth is, we're hurt a lot harder than that. So. I guess it's more of the surprise of you know, I can up, and That's why I was hoping that when we go out and try to find those lease returns where mm -hmm. we can drop our money a little and maybe capitalize that way and not kind of take that big hit all of a sudden. Uh, and then I found that wasn't truly the case. Uh, that was a very hard lesson learned. Yeah, I, I agree with your logic. I don't want to take 20000 and then you have to put 20000 It just makes absolutely no sense. And that was a learning experience on my part. So trustees, again, looking at these options, and again, it, it's good to have options. We don't have to make them, again, that's why it's only a presentation tonight, uh, but it's it's one of those things where, you know, we'll bring forward whatever other information we need so we can make a, a sound decision. And uh, at this point too, if we end up going ahead and buying uh, what we traditionally do, buy a brand new bus, so we'll take that route. 
but I think at some point we're going to have to make that transition and make a decision as far as uh, the, the number of buses that we can afford to, to move forward. And like I said, in the future, if we do go out for a bond and it's a bond that passes, then that's what to consider as far as trying to acquire a few more buses all at once. What's our approximate fund balance? Excuse me, about 10 million, a little over 10 million. Our audit is going to begin in about two to three weeks, and so we'll get a better number at that time. So that was the close of last year. Last year. And just for a quick on the rush bus sales, uh, those buses do include seat belts on each bus, whereas with TSC, that would be the seat belt. That would be an additional cost to that. So. But what I'd like to see is if, if you didn't buy all those, if you bought half, do they give you a, a volume discount that makes it more profitable? We asked that question today. Did you buy half this year, two years, buy another half, or four, 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 or try to spread it out for maintenance wise? You have a variety of agents instead of everybody getting old at the same time. I don't, I don't know. That's what. Well, why don't we, as far as your, your volume discount, unfortunately, we lie outside San Antonio, and when Northside, Northeast is buying 250, 300, 500 buses, right. our little 10 bus deal in La Verne is huge. Uh, but that is like, yeah, how much you want cash? Or you can well, a lot. But as far as, as an option, you know, we can look at various options as well, far as, as our really, location. We don't really get a volume discount. Then we can no, buy sir. four or six, no, sir. eight or ten. Our, our little, you know, well, penalty amount here. Why don't we do this? We'll, we'll break it down to that <coughs> let's say four, and then we'll do a, a seven, and then we'll do a ten, and we'll look at some of these different options that we can come up with some, some numbers that we can look at. It almost starts like a strategic plan. You know, about four this year, one or two next year, then three or four, then one or two, and we just sort of have like, what would be acceptable to you? To, you know, just to almost double what we're replacing. But we start off replacing a little bit, you know, doing a chunk. Yeah, and that goes back to my conversation that we had during budget time is, is trying to come up with an agreed replacement schedule. That way, when we sit down and make these decisions, we can forecast five years from now, we can forecast 10 years from now, and how that rotation, and we just need, uh, I'll come up with some solutions as far as options on how that's, that could look like, and I'll bring it back to the board. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 